Hello everybody and welcome back to Simon's Order Academy. Today we're going to be talking about the Strongholds of Order in the City of the Sigma Battle Time. I'm just going to go through six of the ones in the Battle Time. Uh, we're going to do this in a two-parter, so Tempestai won't be included in this one, uh, but it will be included in the next video. So we're just going to start with kind of high-level overview. So starting with Halahard, of course, my one of my favourite cities and probably the strongest city in the book. Cogs makes it kind of silly. Same thing with Zench. You obviously don't benefit from getting that many spells off, but being able to cast a lot of spells at, you know, plus four, five, six to cast is really strong. Hammerhall is, of course, our combat city, and the good combat options that are coming in the Stormcast Eternals Battle Tome, which will be out in a few weeks, has only made it stronger, in my opinion. Kind of gets hurt because these scenarios have not as great um, deployment, sorry, not deployment zones, uh, territories. So you're quite limited in what your immune to battle shock territory is and what your fight twice territory is. But we'll get into that a little bit deeper later. Living City. So coming on from the side is never bad, obviously. Uh, an extra one to heal is great on top of your heroic actions. It's still a really solid city. Phoenician was one that I didn't play in 2nd edition, basically because there weren't any interesting options to take as an artifact or to take as a command trait. However, now that we've got access to the universal command traits and artifacts, I think that it's much stronger. Phoenix Guard took a bit of a hit, but I still think that they are okay, especially in Phoenician, they're probably quite good. Anvil Guard's an interesting city. Vitriolic Spray definitely keeps the city relevant. When you can shoot something with 30 Dark Shards, and then if they charge you, you unleash hell with 30 Dark Shards, you're always going to be in a strong position. So uh, Anvil Guard is still in a good spot. Unfortunately, the last one on the list, Greywater Fastest, has taken a bit of a hit over a number of, um, number of elements of the city. I'll cover those a little bit later, but it still has a bubble of rare ones to hit. A lot of the reroll, anything to hit in the book have been taken away, and so still having access to that is a boon for Greywater Fastness. So we're going to start with Hallowheart, beginning with nerfs. So the, the minor nerf is that the wizards used to know two spells at baseline, now they only know one per wizard. So you, you'll still have one lore spell and one war scroll spell, or some wizards have two war scroll spells, like the um, Celestial Battle Mage on Hurricanum. But uh, to get that, to get back to where you were in second edition, you're going to need to take the enhancement that gives you an extra spell from the spell law. So yeah, it is what it is. You do get plus one to cast now, of course, um, if you're casting endless spells. So I think that's super strong. So in addition to that flat one to put class in the spells, you're typically getting at least one from the Hurricanum. Uh, you can probably get one from being an amp battle mage as well. You get one between one and six from arcane channeling. You can get one from arcane scenery. You know, there's all these all these separate buffs that you can get to your casting ability, and I think you should be kind of doubling down on those if you want to have a strong magic phase. The and speaking of the endless spells, so chronomantic cogs and salt snare shackles are super strong currently for what they do. I quite like the ability to swap the cro the cogs from an extra spell to a plus one to charge. You know, if you need that on your key turn, your iron breakers or your whatever your combat block is in that city can get up to can get plus two to charge basically from musician and uh, the the chronomantic cogs speeding up time ability. And the soul snare shackles are just always good. You don't typically want your opponent to be charging you. There's going to be a lot of combat armies in this edition. I think that we're going to see. A lot of the shooting kind of drop off. That's just my early thoughts about it. But I think that that's going to kind of fall away as the edition shakes out because you need to get on objectives and shooting in it's going on objectives doesn't really happen that well. Soul Screen Bridge. So in this city, I th still think the best combo is Soul Screen Bridge and Iron Drakes because you can get them to twos and twos, rerolling ones to wound, rend two, damage one. So really strong. I don't think it's gone away. The bridge drop points, it can only take one unit now, but you only need to take the Iron Drakes. A lot of the buffs happen in the hero phase and don't require them to remain within range. And they can also give themselves plus one to hit with the all-out attack from the unit leader now. So yeah, I don't I don't think that that, that is going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, the addition of the Arcane Tome making a character a wizard opens up more options than the White Fire Tome, which was the previous option that I took could, because the White Fire Tome doesn't make you a wizard, whereas the Arcane Tome does make you a wizard. 
I thought I, I thought that maybe they'd change the white fire tome and all of the other relevant artifacts and command traits in the city's book to make people wizards, but they haven't done that. So until they do, the arcane tome is the strongest choice. Uh, the veteran of the blazing crusade command trait still one of the best in the book. Uh, 18 inches immune to battle shock is huge. If you don't realize the impact of that, then you need to go and read it and you need to play it in practice to see how good it is. Um, I've already mentioned all that attack from the unit leaders um, means you don't have to rely on the Hurricanum, but even with the Hurricanum and all that attack, um, you can negate you know negative ones to hit. The 5 plus spell shrug is really good. Um, I think it's quite a quite a strong ability just to have in the city, and you. You can basically, if, if especially when you can improve that to a four plus with the law spell, um, with the crystal Aegis, four plus to ignore spells is massive in this edition as well. There's going to be a lot of magic being thrown at you if you can just say on a four up, no, I don't care. Uh, it's it's huge. Now the decision point in taking in in this city is taking either the either the extra artifact or an additional spell on each wizard, and I'm kind of 50% on both because I think the extra artifact of power, like a five up ward save, is huge. Even on the hurricane that you're going to use arcane channeling on, it's still pretty it's it's still pretty important. Uh, even if you got you know you're still pretty happy with a plus three to cast. So if you roll a four, five, or six and you save a couple of them, it doesn't really matter. But if you're taking a bigger wizard like say the Amber Battle Mage on, on Griffin, 5 plus ward save is huge on that guy. So you just need to, to basically weigh up and consider what you think you're going to need to take in the city and then make that decision yourself because I'm, I'm still, I am sitting on the fence with which one to do. So Hammer Hall has taken a little bit of a hit with the change. The only being able to use one command ability on a unit per phase is pretty big and not being able to use the same one twice means that you can only fight twice with one unit in the combat phase instead of multiple like I used to do. So that's fairly significant but not absolutely huge. I kind of touched on this in the intro but the General's Handbook 2021 scenarios only 5 out of 12 have the board split 50-50 and then the rest of them have you know I think there's three that are um, that have a quarter of the board your territory and a quarter of a quarter of the board your enemy's territory, and that's an 11 inch block. Like that's not much. So it's yeah, it, it basically it's difficult to to in those scenarios to get your your innate battle traits off, which is which devalues the city obviously. So if you're going to a tournament, make sure that you understand what scenarios are going to be played if they're predetermined, and if not, you just have to be willing to accept that you know Hammer Hall may not be the best choice because you might get you know, three or four scenarios that aren't half the board of your territory. And that, that means that uh, Hammer Hall isn't obviously going to be that strong. Um, command points. You want to be spending all the command points that you can have access to in this edition, and so I think the extra CPs from banners is super helpful because you want all that defense, you want all that attack, you want all of these, the, the wonderful new spells to negate rend and, you know, give you bonuses to hit. All of it's really strong. So that's a, a, a very welcome ability. Um, any new combat options that come from the Stormcast book that comes out in a few weeks will increase the viability of the city significantly. I, I say combat options because Hammerhall's the combat city. Obviously, the combat option is going to be the strong choice here. If you went to something like Tempesai, any good shooting units that come out of the new Stormcast book will obviously be good in Tempesai, for example. The Vindictors are already my favoured pick in Hammerhall. I really like them at 140 points. When you're comparing them to Greatswords that are 150 points, I don't think it's even a competition. I think you just put your great swords in the bin and you take Vindictors every day of the week because you're saving 30 points. They're plus one arm save over the top. They've got a two inch reach and they do the same thing with their. They don't do a six six to mortal in addition. They do a six instead. But you know you, you want mortals in this edition and I think that the Vindictors are a great way to get it. The blood of the twelve command trait really strong, especially for a combat city like this real ones to wound just really good you don't get it many other places you can get the vindictors on twos reroll ones if you use the triumph to give them plus one to wound or if you're in um yeah, sorry we're in hammer hall so we're just talking about that and um it's pretty much unavailable anywhere else except on phoenix guard so it's really strong the artifacts are all quite fun I think they're all outshone by the Amulet of Destiny, um, but you know you can take an Assassin with the Saint's Blade or a Knight. Um, oh God, what are they? Knight Zephyr, Zephyros, Zephyros. 
Anyway, the one that um that does a lot of wounds. God, I'm going to have to look look it up now. You're making me look it up, people. Night. Zephyros, there we go. So again, an interesting option on, on him. Similar attack profile to the Assassin. The reason I like it on the Assassin over the Night Zephyros is that you can um, you keep it on the Assassin, you pop the Assassin out of any unit anywhere on the table. So you can basically guarantee that he's going to be within six inches of an objective to get that extra rend and then extra damage as well. So I, I quite like that on the Assassin. Obviously, the um, the Twin Stone was good in the previous edition, and plus one hit is never bad, uh, but I think you just take a Hurricanum to get that rather than using an artifact, and I think you go, um, you always go with the Amulet of Destiny. I think that's always a great choice, and the other one's a plus one to save, which is not bad, um, but there, there are multiple ways to get that in this, this edition, so I think you'd want to get your artifacts elsewhere. Hammerhall, I think net changes, they've gotten, they've, they're quite strong in the current meta and the current edition. So the Living City I'm a little bit unsure about currently. So they, they got away with a lot in the addition change. However, again, strike and fade towards slash away. You can only do it on one unit. So previously I used to do it on like say, um, Concusses and on Durthu in the same turn. However, um, now you can only do it on one unit um, per phase. You can't make Dirth through the general anymore, which is sad. It means you can't put Ino Gardasen on him anymore to make him a two plus to wound and a two up armor save, which yeah, it's it's sad, but it is what it is. It's still like he's still half decent in Living City. He's quite expensive now, but I think he still has a role. Hunters of the Hidden Paths is good on the on the smaller board. So coming on, moving with Strike and Fade towards Slash Away, and then charging stuff is easy now because you've got a smaller board and there's going to be more room to get stuff. And I don't know if you saw the battle report that I did um, a few weeks ago, second edition, but my handgun has trudged along the entire battlefield to get to the other side. If the board was 12 inch shorter, they would have probably won me the game. So that's basically it's a nice change. The healing on top of heroic recovery, so you're basically in D3 plus one um, in your hero phase, really strong. And especially good on things like Frostheart Phoenixes. Um, the... Tree Lord Ancient is now a much better option in the army because you it changes how you place the Sylvaneth Wildwoods. Basically, you can put one next to him and then two wholly within 18 of him. And you can teleport both him and Durthu through, through those trees, even after somebody's destroyed the, um, you know, done the, the monstrous stomping on terrain. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. But basically, because their their teleports on their war scroll and doesn't actually affect the trees, you can still do it once the trees have been stomped on. So, um, it, he's an interesting option. He's a one cast wizard. He has a bubble of plus one armor save to Sylvaneth units. He, yeah, the the combo of Durthu and Tree Lord Ancient. I'm gonna keep trying it. I, the latest battle report doesn't really do it justice, but I'm gonna keep trying it and see how it goes. Ino Artisan still is. Um, a great command trait to be able to take plus one armor seven plus one to wound the problem is is that we don't really have models to put it on because all of our um uh all of our heroes that are that are able to benefit from it typically um because it's a command trait your mount can't get it so you can't make your mount like two plus to wound for example it's only the guy on top and the guys on top are pretty average um so I don't know if you still run Iron Oak Artisan. If you take a Nomad Prince, you probably do because he's uh, three threes, run one two damage, and he has a three up safe base, so it goes to a two up with that. So he's not a bad place to put it, but I think there are better options basically. The spell law for the city is also strong. Um, all three spells are solid. Minus one to wound is solid. Uh, can't move, or if you do move, you take D6 mortal wound, solid, and then life swarm. Um, not life swarm. Um, you know what I'm talking about, the healing spell, life bloom, something like that. Uh, that one, you know, heal d6, also strong. And when you take a, a Lariel in your list and you can heal like 5d6 in a turn, that's that's quite, like, you know, if you don't kill her, then she's going to heal back to full every single turn. So that's good fun. And then finally, the items aren't that great. I've never been a, a, a fan of the, the Spear of... Destiny? It's not Spear of Destiny. I'm thinking Spear of Destiny because of the Amulet of Destiny. Um, the, the point is here is that the Amulet of Destiny overshadows a lot of the artifacts that are available. Um, Spear of the Hunt is what it's called. I, I, I've never really been a big fan of that. 
negative one rend and um, fights first when you charge. Like you're, I don't know, you're always going to fight first when you charge, so why bother? Um, Amulet of Destiny, really strong. Put it on Durthu, done. There you go. There's your there's your artifact choice. I do also like the Deep Mire Cloak. So when you've got, again, so let's talk about the uh, Nomad Prince with, um, say that he's got Iron Oak Artisan, he's your general, he's in cover. You give him the Deep Mire Cloak and you put him in cover, he can't actually be targeted by ranged attacks, so it's, it's super strong. And then he can just sit there with his bird that he just throws at people from 18 inches away and makes a minus one to everything, essentially. He's really strong, um, and so I quite like that. And if you can put him in woods um, from the Tree Lord Ancient, that's it's quite a um, you know a fun combo as well. So Living City, I quite like. I I need more practice with him. I think that there's a lot of new, I mean I need more practice with Third Edition in general. The game has changed so much, and people think it's the same game, but it's not at all. Um, but it's yeah, Living City is, is going to be an option again always because it's got strong allegiance abilities, and I I don't think it's ever going to like fall out of favour. So the Phoenician's an interesting one. I didn't like it in second edition because boring command trades, boring artifacts. I'm barely even going to mention them. The spell wars okay, but all all that stuff is boring. So. I do own 60 Phoenix Guard, and I did intend at some point to run 60 Phoenix Guard in this city with stuff to taste, including two units of Aether Wings. We'll get to them later, but my two units of Aether Wings that I've got are painted up as Baby Frostire Phoenixes and Baby Flame Spire Phoenixes to, to narratively tie into this city. So Vengeful Revenants is, is the strongest, kind of the reason why you would take this city. Plus when you hit and wound if a unit is destroyed in the same phase. So what you basically want to do is you want to charge two units into um, something. You want one of those units to be your Aether Wings and one of those units to be your Phoenix Guard. And you go, all right, I fight first with my Aether Wings. Then the opponent has to pick their unit to fight. And ideally they do six wounds to the Aether Wings, which most units should be able to do. Even Chaff should be able to do six wounds to Aether Wings. And then that means that your Phoenix Guard who are fighting next get plus one hit, plus one a wound. So they're on twos and twos. So that's really, really cool. Um, you also get an extra wound on Frost Huts and Flame Spires. I wouldn't bother taking Flame Spires at the moment. Um, I think I mentioned it in the last video, but basically without changes to wording on their, on their War Scroll for them being able to burn stuff when they retreat and when they run, I don't think they're worth it at all at the moment, um, which is sad because I really wanted to play one. Um, but the fr Frost Hearts are always going to be good. So take a Frost Heart, 13 wounds, 4 up after save, heroic healing now. Um, Golden Mist to heal them from the spell lock, really strong. The command uh, ability from the city allows you to pilot, well, that allows you to fight on death. Um, so Phoenix Guard are quite good for this again, because especially if they're on um, either they're on twos to hit and threes to wound, if you've spent a CP to do Living Idols, which is the, um, oh, sorry, to do Captain of the Phoenix Guard to make them re-roll wounds and you've got a hurricane near them they're they're hitting on twos re-roll uh hitting on twos and then threes to wound re-rolling all you know if your opponent's killing phoenix guard you're throwing them back at them to do damage you're actually outputting a lot of wounds um again there's not a lot of mortal wounds coming from them and they're only rend one which is devalued a little bit in third edition but still you know it's really hard to kill phoenix guard and if they fight you again when when they kill you really strong uh, then finally, yeah, command traits. This is what I'm talking about with the, the command traits and the artifacts. So Seeker of Vengeance is like you get an extra one attack if something's killed in the same phase, or you get an extra three attacks if something's killed in the same turn. So, like, do you care? I don't think you care. Plus three attacks. Like, what, is, what does it do in this city? Anyway, um, you know, it, it, it could potentially, if you've got a Frostheart Phoenix um, with Anointed on top, with the arcane tome to give him flaming weapons and then you gave him seeker of vengeance maybe that would be interesting but i think you just would just do the flaming weapons on the claws anyway on the um, on the bird so and what i like and what i've taken in the one game i've played with phoenician is heroic stature on an anointed on foot to give him six wounds and you don't think that it's huge but he gets to you know he gets a four up after save and he has a retinue for four ups so that one wound is actually, what, four wounds? Is that how it works? I think that's how it works. So really strong in this city. 
Um, the artifacts are again boring. So you take Arcane Tome on a, on a Frosty, that's strong. You can take a five up after save on like a Hurricane if you've got one in the list, um, if it's got a hero on top of it. So super strong. The Amber Tide is interesting. I think that if you were to run um, Amber Tide, which is um, half movement, and you were then to ride, um, and uh, sorry, it's on a, on a unit within 18 inches and half that unit's move characteristic. But then you go and you get the Shards of Valagar, which again are an interesting choice because they also have the movement um, of, of your opponent's models. I'm just getting the exact wording. Um, yeah, half the, uh, half the moving characteristic of a unit that is ensnared. I don't think that works. That's disappointing because they both half the move characteristic. I don't know if you halve it and then halve it again. I don't know how it applies. It might work. Who knows? Sounds fun. Um, but the Golden Misses is a great spell and one that you should always take. And, you know, if the Frosty wants to cast it on himself, then he heals D3, but he also gets plus one to his armor save. So if you if you just want him to, to tank, basically, and you don't want him to have good... And you, you don't need him to have good output, you can do Golden Mist on himself instead of Flaming Weapons. Depends what role you want him to play in the city. Uh, but yeah, Phoenicium are, are interesting, and I'm going to be playing um, a bit more of them in 3rd edition, and definitely more of them than I was in 3rd edition, uh, in 2nd edition. So, poor Anvil Guard. Marathi came, took it, didn't give it back to Sigma. Anvil Guard doesn't really exist anymore, but the rules for the city still exist. So let's pretend that the city still exists in the, in the fluff. So... Blackfang Crime Lord is basically you get these these extra things that you can take um, on your general to make him better. So I like Blackfang Crime Lord. So it's a command trait that allows you to have an extra um, extra artifact, and then you take a second one which gives you an extra D3 CP. Both really strong. So the the city also has access to Drag Scale Cloak, which is um, a five up ward save as well. So you can take both the Drag Scale Cloak and the Amulet of Destiny for two models having a five up ward save. Really, really strong. Um, the Drake Blood Curses are good on hero monsters. Um, by hero monsters, I mean you can only take it on sorcerers and uh, sorceresses on Black Dragon and Dreadlords on Black Dragon. And I think in this city you want it on a, you want to take a sorceress on Black Dragon. And so you give it a bleed. Um, sorry, it's, you give it Acidic Blood, which is the Drake Blood Curse. And basically, when it's in combat, it takes a wound on a four up. It does a mortal wound to whatever hurt it. And then you can heal that back with heroic recovery. So I think that that's, I think that's a strong combo. Their command trait for the city is that same as Harkiron, you stab a dude, and then uh, units wholly within 18 inches of that unit, not the model that was stabbed, but the unit that the model was part of, um, wholly within 18 inches of that unit, immune to battle shock. So it's inspiring presence on steroids. It's really strong and basically negates the the negative bonus of inspiring presence you can only do it once a phase because this basically does it for your whole army like imagine if you've got a unit of 10 uh, of 30 dark shards strung out 10 across and then three deep you've got you know probably at least 10 inch coverage sometimes maybe even 15 with a little bit of spacing across the battlefield so 15 out of the 60 inches and then you go 18 from each side of that unit so you're basically covering 51 inches of 60 inches of the board with your immune to battle shock so really really strong and then of course vitriol spray which is still probably the best spell in the game and i think it's particularly relevant in third edition now that armor stacking that everybody is armor stacking so yeah i'm i'm really excited about what vitriol spray is going to do for cities in third edition and i think in this city because you're encouraged to take sorceresses on dragons and sorceresses and dark shards, it's going to be an interesting combo. So I'm looking forward to playing Anvil Guard. Again, I didn't really play Anvil Guard in 3rd edition. I was waiting for models to play Drusa Shadow Shadowhost at Brisshammer. They still haven't arrived. Brisshammer was last weekend and was cancelled, so they weren't going to arrive in time anyway. But I will be playing that in 3rd edition, probably one of the next games in the coming weeks. So I quite like Anvil Guard in 3rd edition. Poor Greywater Fastness. This is actually one of my favourite cities because I am basically Captain Steam Tank from back in the 7th edition days. I used to get so much flack from people because I loved Steam Tanks and I just wanted to play them back when they used to be good. 
they aren't that good anymore, unfortunately. Um, so it's, it's from the addition change in the FAQs, so it's taken a bit of a hit. So the rune law, you used to be able to do it in addition to any other prayers that you could do. Now it is just an extra prayer that the that a rune lord nodes, um, which gives plus one hit on a war machine within three inches of him, I think. So yeah, it's not that strong. And the city specific command ability, I think it's salvo fire. It's identical to all out attack, but you can only use it on handgunners and iron drakes. So the upside of that is that you can do both all out attack and salvo fire on two different units if you wanted to. However, I don't ever think that you're going to want to do that. And I think that if they got something better, like, you know, you could do reroll ones to hit or you could do an extra rend, like literally anything else other than plus one to hit on that would be would be good. Um, Drill Master is still a strong command trait as... I, I've written here that rerolls have been mostly wiped out, but they, it just looks like they've been selectively wiped out across the board. Because so many things still get it. It really annoys me how many things still get rerolls um, if they're trying to eliminate it from the game. I don't know if they're just not paying attention. But anyway, reroll wants to hit strong. You can also get it on a Xeros, so... But he is the target has to be holy has to be within ten inches, whereas the draw master is that your unit only has to be holy within twelve inches. So it's not horrible. Um, then home of the Ironworld Guild, so plus three inches to your ranged weapons uh, on your on your Ironworld arsenal models. So steam tanks with plus three inches range is good. Gyrocopters with steam guns plus three inches is good. Again, because of the hit that um, the same one that hit the Flame Spy Phoenixes is the same one that's hit the Gyro Bombers. I don't know if I'd be running them at the moment, basically because they can't run or retreat and drop bombs. If they could, I might actually give them a look, especially in Grey Water Fastest, but at the moment they're not even getting a look in. And artifact-wise, the artifacts are somewhat interesting. Amulet of Destiny is still the better option out of all of them. So Steam, Pist uh, Steam Piston, Plate Mail is great for heroes with a 3 plus base armor save, like a steam tank hero for example. Runic munitions is okay, um, it can be put on a um, knight veritant. That's not his name is it? Is he a knight veritant? This is, this is great listening. Um, so the, the new guy, the um, the Lord Imperitant, I think is is one of the interesting places you can put it. He gets D6 shots. I think it's 18 inch range, threes and threes, rend one, one damage. So if you can make a rend one, two damage and roll six on him, you got a Hurricane, you give him plus one to hit, reroll ones to, to hit with the Drill Lord, uh, drill Master. It's, um, yeah, it's not it's not horrible. So I do um, I do think that, that, it, that Runic Munitions could pay, play a role if people wanted it to. Um, Knight Venator, that's what I was trying to say, not, not Veriton. Um, Knight Venator, he's got three shots. Um, he can do a special shot. You can make them all an extra wound. So it's like, you know, the Lord Imperitant is, he rolls a D6 and that's how many shots you get on average. You're going to get three and a half. The Knight Veriton gets three shots base and can do a special shot once a game. It's an option. It's not, it's not that great but you know it's something you can take i think you just take the amulet of destiny most of the time the spell lore is also mostly uninteresting minus one to hit and mortal wound spells that you don't really need like the one in this is just uh, patently worse than um uh elemental cyclone in hello heart because it does mortal wounds on a five and it's within 15 so yeah i don't know why it's not just the same but they decided to change it for whatever reason um, and then, yeah, so I think out of the Battle Tome cities, Greywater was probably the worst hit out of all of them, especially because I know a lot of people used to play the Greywater Battalion from 2nd Edition, the Greywater Battery, was it called? Anyway, the one with the, the two to four rockets and a Cogsmith. Um, I don't think that rockets are viable anymore i could potentially be talked around to um volley guns but they're just they're just too much of a liability i don't think you bother taking them you just take battle line units with guns that are a thousand times better than they will ever be basically which is sad um but it is what it is all right well that's it so thanks very much for listening uh thanks to the patrons listed below 
So Brad Lex, Mark and Des, you guys are legends. You, I, you know, as everyone, as I've said in a lot of places, I would still make the content if these guys weren't supporting me, but because they do, I basically make sure that I get one episode at least out every single week. So you can thank these guys if you're enjoying my content and if you'd like to join them, um, the link to the Patreons in the in the um, uh, description below. If you have any questions, reach out. I am on Twitter at Zweihanderhall, Z-W-E-I-H-A-N-D-E-R, Hall, H-A-L-L, or one word, um, or hit me up on Facebook. I'm in the Cities group. I'm always willing to talk. I'm always more than happy to give my opinion on, on everything. Um, we will be, well, I will be doing the part two video for this. Uh, it'll be released next week. And after that, we might get um, get back into some unit deep dives. But by then, we might even be close to getting the Stormcast book out because I am super keen for that and super keen to kind of look at the synergies and the, the new rules for the book that we'll be able to use um, in the Cities of Sigma. So thanks, everyone, for watching, and I will speak to you next time.